Security authorities have confirmed the Kenyan police have handed over a suspected terrorist in a collaborative effort to tackle agents who are plotting attacks in the two East African countries. Ali Issa Senkumba, believed to be a Ugandan from Butambala, was arrested last week by Kenyan police while allegedly on the run from Uganda. He was handed over to the Ugandan police uh, yesterday. And obviously the Kenyan police had, had to do their own investigations. So I believe after exhaustive uh, interrogation by the Kenyan police, they, they felt it or they saw it fitting to hand over the suspect uh, to the Ugandan police. He becomes the seventh suspect under investigation for terrorism in Uganda. Over the weekend, Kenyan police shot dead a man of Somali descent with a bag full of detonators and explosives. This was just before the twin bombings in Kampala on Sunday. But the police here are not saying whether the suspect handed over by Kenyan authorities is linked to the twin blasts. We are closely working with the Kenyan police and also Interpol Uganda. We are in touch even Interpol International and uh, the, 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 the teams are working to verify all the information and also to establish the, the, li the linkage between, between the groups. Army spokesman Felix Kulaije has confirmed the bomb blasts were the work of suicide bombers, although he did not divulge the identity of the attackers. The methodology that was used is typical of terrorists. It's evident the person was a suicide bomber uh, because if the bomb had been planted, it would create a crater. Kulaije maintains Uganda will continue to honor its AMISO mandate and send troops in Somalia, a statement that could anger opposition politicians who are calling for the withdrawal of Ugandan troops from the war-torn country. The opposition argue it's the only way Uganda will escape the wrath of the Islamic militants in future. The majority of countries in Africa have shunned the Somali situation. Why is Uganda risking beyond risk? They should be recalled. If they are not recalled, we in the opposition are going to make this an issue in the coming election. Al Shabab wants everybody out. They have lost ground in Afghanistan. They are looking for a safe haven. Leave from Somalia to go back to lawlessness, they take it over. Once they have taken it over, are we safe? So terrorism has no face, has no boundary, has no religion, has no race. For that reason, we must make sure it is denied this space. The death toll from Sunday's blasts remain at 76, although police suspect the number could rise due to serious injuries. Some bomb victims are nursing. The bodies which were recovered from the two scenes and were directly brought to the campus to cancel mortuary. Some victims who died in Mlago Hospital who requested them to bring down the bodies to campus to cancel mortuary. And also IHK, that is International Hospital Kampala. Breaking down the numbers by sexes, 53 men and 21 women were killed in the blasts, among them 12 foreign nationals. One American male, one Irish female, one Sri Lankan male, an Indian male, a Kenyan male, an Ethiopian and six Eritreans. Two unidentified heads recovered separately from the scenes of the blasts are still under investigation. Government, in the meantime, has announced it will meet funeral and medical expenses for the bomb victims. Body expenses and expenses of those in hospital. Five million uh, for the bereaved ones and three million for those injured. As the security forces piece together the evidence from forensic audit, it's more clearer now that the terrorist attack was planned well in advance from outside the country. What is more certain is that Uganda will no longer be the same acclaimed hospitable country to strangers after the destructive suicide bombers who came to town left behind a trail of destruction, human lives, despair and fear. Yusuf Emiru, NTV, Kampala.